Good morning, everyone. As always, place the cross on first. No matter what day it is, no matter what time it is, no matter where you are, no matter where you go, place the cross on first. You see, that's the problem with most Christians. Oh, I'm at a party. I can't bring God up in the midst. Well, I guess Jesus had a problem with that. Because guess what? That's what they used to tell him. Why are you sitting with publicans and sinners? You understand? Jesus was like, hey, it is what it is. Why aren't you? And those so many words. No matter where you are. You see, a lot of Christians are fearful for this reason. And doubtful for this reason. That's why some places they go, God is not there. Because God is sitting in your heart to bring them there. Wherever you go. Makes sense? So if you're trying to hide the words that deny before men, I will deny you before my Father which is in heaven. So no matter where you are, no matter where you're at, if you're compelled to talk about Christ, you talk about Christ. I don't care if you went to a bar. I don't care if you're at the strip club. I don't care where you're at. If God compels you to do that, you do it. Anyway, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me another chance to spread your word, to minister to your children, to minister to myself, to let your Holy Spirit work on me and continue to work on me. And continue to work on those that are around me, Lord Jesus. Continue to allow me to give to have the strength to spread your word in season and out of season, no matter where I'm at, no matter where I go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to read from Mark, chapter 5, verse 25. I'm going to read from there and I'm going to go to chapter 6 too a little bit. But this is, uh, I love this. I've been talking about unbelief. This is going to be an unbelief continuation. Chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Trying to put your trust in man, she got worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch, but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She believed, if I can just touch him. She heard about Jesus, and she seeked him. And she said, if I can just touch his clothes. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Now, this is a weird question in the crowd. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Just think about it. Like, how in the world am I supposed to know who touched you in this big crowd? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is a good thing. So she had a little fearful in her and trembling. <laughs> and she went and bowed down. She had no choice. See, by fearing, she was made whole. Wow, deep, ain't it? And he said it to her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. And behold of that plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogues. How certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master? And further, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said it to thee, Ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. What did he say? Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James, and John the brother of James. And he came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see if the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. What he said, believe. Believe every word that comes out of his mouth. She's not dead, sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Oh, wow. They didn't believe. But when he had put them all out, get out of here, non-believers. He taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in with the damsel lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said to her, Talitha coming, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. 
that's a good that's a good story ain't it ain't that's great God gave you two examples one woman believed by herself and her faith made her whole because she believed in Jesus she didn't need nobody else all you need is Jesus they say that right but also in the second case what happened he went to a house and he was like the woman sleep the child sleepeth you understand? They started laughing, man. She must, he must be crazy. That woman is dead. So he took, he told the unbelievers to get out. Get on out of here. You understand? I don't need that kind of negativity around. I don't need that kind of energy around. See you later. Then he told the, the child, Talitha Kami, which is arise. Arise. And she got up and she walked. Wow, ain't that deep. Ain't that deep. Well, I was going to read a little further, but somebody got behind me in the gas pump, so I, I didn't want to be inconsiderate. But I'm going to continue on, on my own, in regards to chapter 6. Well, after chapter 6, Jesus went back home to where he was born, where he was raised. No, where he was raised. Went back to his hometown and preaching in the synagogues and teaching in the synagogues. And, and they looking at him, they're astonished at his doctrine. And they're, they're like, who is this? Ain't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of Simon, and this and that? And they were upset with him. You understand? And he said, they said, uh, in this town, he did less miracles. In his hometown, he did less miracles. He said, a prophet gets no basically respect in his hometown. Wow. So he, he healed a few people in his hometown. He didn't heal many. But why didn't he heal many? Answer the question. What did I told you what it was about? Unbelief? He didn't heal many because they didn't believe. He healed a few. He only healed a few in that town because of unbelief. We're not unequally yoked with non-believers. So he couldn't do as many. It's not that he couldn't do it. They got to believe in him in order for it to work. That's why he said, it's two of us two joined together in my name. And they ask anything in my name, if they believe in their heart and their soul, it will be done. You understand? Sometimes, in most cases, prayer has to work both ways. Belief has to go both ways. Husband and wife, you want it to work? Both ways. Both of y'all got to believe. Now, that's the thing. Unbelief, right? Unbelief. That's a, I told you that's a term that's very confusing. He didn't say non-believer because it's a different from a non-believer and unbelief. A non-believer is somebody who don't believe nothing. That's an atheist. Unbelief is somebody who know who you are, who he is. He said they knew, ain't this Jesus? The carpenter's son, the carpenter? So they believe Jesus. They knew Jesus, but they didn't believe he was who he was. Do you understand? Now, before I go any further. Let's think about this. Let's think about the Muslim faith. I believe that's Jesus. I believe Jesus was here. But I just don't believe he was the son of God. You see? You see what unbelief means? I believe he was a good man. But I don't believe he was the son of God. Wow. Think about it. That's unbelief. Now... I'm not saying all Muslims are bad. I'm not saying all people are bad. But unbelief is deadly. Very deadly. You understand? That's like, you know, believing in something and not believing in it at the same time. Wow. He's not the son of God. We still waiting on Jesus to come. So you still waiting on Jesus to come. You still waiting on the son of God to come. How can you be healed from anything? How can your land be healed if you don't believe in the one God sent? This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. But right after that, he sent the disciples out. I always keep talking about how he sent the disciples out. He said, if they hear you, they hear me. So, let me go back. A prophet has no respect in his hometown. Let's put it this way. I'm a, I can only talk about myself sometime. I can only talk about myself sometime. Okay, years ago, God gave me the spirit to understand the word. He gave me the spirit to understand things, he gave me the gifts, some gifts. Then he told me to go out. Okay. Let's say everybody who knew me before. 
That's just Houston. That's just Houston. There's no way he didn't turn his life around for God's sake. You understand? Okay, let's say I go to somebody's house and they don't believe that God sent me. And that goes for you and anybody else. I go to somebody's house or you go to somebody else and you don't believe. The person don't believe that God sent you to pray for them, to heal through you. They don't believe the person that God sent. Unbelief. If they don't hear you, they don't hear me. So they won't be healed. So you leave that house, nothing happens. Does that mean you didn't do your work as a Christian? Nope. If you read anything from these few verses I just read to you, if you take anything from it, realize the person you're praying for has to believe in God too and not be of doubtful mind. You understand? Why did he kick the non-believers out? Because they would have hindered the blessings. Can I tell you a prayer? I'll tell you something that happened to me and my wife about a year and a half ago. Right after we met, we started reading the Bible. And one of my wife's friends, Lisa, she found out that she was in the hospital near death. Found out she was in the hospital near death. And God compelled us. She was like, y'all need to go to the church. I go to the hospital. So me and my wife, we go to the hospital. And we waited, we waited. Once everybody was out of the room, we said a prayer over her in her bed. She was in a coma. She was sleeping. She was in a coma. She was sleeping. Right? So we said a little prayer out there. We said a little prayer to her. Doing what God, being obedient to God. We said a prayer. And we left. We went outside. And we communed with the family a little bit. And all you hear from the family is, oh, she's about to die. She's dying. She's she don't have days. They said she's never gonna wake up. Oh, all the unbelief I can imagine is coming out of their mouths. And I told my wife back then. You understand? I said, hey, even if she don't come through to this, we did our part. Okay. We didn't go back to the hospital, but we heard got word, got wind that she woke up. I ain't saying we did anything, I'm saying God did it. But she woke up out of her sleep and started to communicate with her family members and her friends and shortly after a few days later she passed so we went to her funeral and we went to the funeral and the pastor was talking up there he was like he went and visited her and when she woke up from the coma she gave her life to Jesus Christ now how does this relate to what I'm talking about relate to unbelief let me tell you something people when you pray you need believers when you desire something and it takes more than two people everybody has to believe the cause that goes for Christ that goes for life everybody has to be on one accord in belief it's not going to happen if everybody don't believe you understand? You understand? You can pray your heads off. You know, a lot of people believe in Jesus. They believe in, yeah, God can bless me with funds. God can bless me with a new car. God can bless me with a house. But when it comes to the healing aspect, they got a little doubt. Not just because they have doubt in it. They have doubt in other parts of the Bible. Moses part of the Red Sea. I, I doubt that. But I believe Jesus was a good man. I believe Jesus came and Jesus was a good man. I believe he was the son of God. But I don't I don't believe Jonah was swallowed by a fish. I really don't. I don't believe Paul was visited on the road to Damascus. I don't believe Peter walked on water. But I believe in Jesus. I go to church every Sunday. But I just don't believe all of it. You understand? Unbelief. Beware of unbelief. Unbelief can hinder your prayers and unbelievers can hinder your prayers also you understand one accord you need to be yoked with believers and not unequally yoked with non-believers you know why a lot of things ain't happening in your life it's not necessarily your fault but the people the company you keep plays a huge part in your growth and your walk with God. 
Can I go back to the Old Testament? Can I go, can I go back to Egypt? Can I go back to Moses and all the non-believers and it led to Moses and the children of Israel running around for 40 years? For what? Unbelief? Failure to realize that Moses was sent by God to operate according to his will, to spread his word, because every time he told them something, they'll do the exact opposite, and unbelief caused them to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. Unbelief. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to hang around unbelievers. I can't necessarily say fakers. I believe they believe in Jesus. But they're missing something. They don't believe all of it. They don't believe Jesus can do a lot of things. They really don't understand the power of healing and the power of prayer. Am I saying they can't change? Anybody can change. But the thing is, don't stunt your growth. Waiting for some unbeliever to catch up. Don't stunt your growth. You believe you keep moving forward. You keep moving forward. You keep moving forward. You keep rising. You keep elevating. Well, you don't believe? So be it. You understand? You don't believe? You see, if you read your Bible, he said, you'll be able to do these works that I do. He didn't say the preacher will be able to do the works that I do. He didn't say the elders will be able to do the works that I do. He didn't say the ministers be able to do the works that I do. He didn't say the people that speak in tongues would be able to do the works that I do. He didn't specific specify specific people who could do certain things. Philippians says it this way. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you understand? We all have gifts. We all can do whatever God wants us to do at that time if we believe. But the also, a lot of prayers ain't been answered because the receiving end doesn't believe wholeheartedly. And you know what? A lot of Christians, they'll beat themselves up. Lord, I'm not where you want me to be. I'm not healing people like I should. Maybe you're doing your part. Maybe they're just not receiving the healing because of doubt. Because they don't believe you are who you say you are. You understand? Do you understand? Can I go to the story? Another way doubt can hinder you. You know, when uh, Paul was exercising demons in Demopolis, I think, and the two men, they tried to do it too. They didn't truly understand what Jesus was doing, what Jesus was all about. And they tried to use Jesus' name. In vain they used it. But they truly didn't understand. We exercise you in the name of Jesus that Paul talks about. Really. That demon looked at him. Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? Doubt. They didn't truly understand the concept of what Paul was doing. Paul believed. Paul was moved by the spirit to do the will of God. They doing it because they saw somebody else doing it. And guess what? In this world we live in today. There's a lot of false prophets and false preachers and the false teachers out there. They're doing it because they saw other people doing it. And truly don't even understand. You see, I watched the movie. I can't remember what it said. Uh, it was about a little boy that died and saw Jesus in heaven. And his father was a preacher. And his father preached the word, but he truly didn't, un didn't believe in heaven or hell. And he was talking about a lot of the congregation. They truly didn't believe in heaven or hell. They truly... Well, they had unbelief within their hearts. And even the pastor didn't really believe the son until he started revealing things to him that only God could know. He had to strengthen their unbelief. And a lot of times in life, the unbelievers, they have to be strengthened. They have to be seeing something. I'm not saying, but the thing is, God shows everybody something in regards to him all the time. He just has to believe it. You understand? Count your blessings. Right? Count your blessings. Right? Count your blessings. Right? Remember them. I always tell people all the time, remember what you pray for. Remember what you pray for. So when it comes to pass, you'll know it was God that done it. 
it strengthens your unbelief. You understand? The Bible says it's better to not have known me, the truth, than to know the truth and turn away from me. He says it's better to not have known. So what Jesus is saying, our unbeliever is better than a, it's worse than a non-believer. You know why? Because a, a unbeliever knows the truth, saw the truth, witnessed the truth, and still don't believe. Believe that Jesus is real, but still don't believe that he can do what he can do, that he's the son of God and all these things. An atheist, Jesus said, a, the Bible says a atheist, a non-believer is better than somebody who don't know him, who turns away. Wow. And there's many ways to turn away from God. Many ways I gave you examples in regards to the Old Testament. In the Old Testament when I can't remember the, the exact uh, king name, but uh, God delivered him from an army. And then all of a sudden he forgot about God. And he called on his friends to help him with Syria. I mean from Syria to help him with, with some inhibited enemies and he paid them and they helped him and then God was angered by that and then he uh, got an illness in the feet and he forgot that God can heal all things so he called physicians and things and they couldn't heal him. Sound like the flow of blood woman, right? But the flow of blood woman believed. But this man but knew God and forgot about him. I forgot to call him. He's like, did I help you before? Why are you calling me now? Why are you putting your trust in man now? You would surely die. And guess what? That same illness in his feet killed him. Because of unbelief. Falling away from God is a form of unbelief. I mean, you don't believe God can do what he says he can do. You understand? They don't believe that means a lot of things. You see, I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to tell the truth. I'm working on a song right now. I'm doing this for real, and I'm going to keep it real. I don't care about naysayers, or unbelief. All I care is about the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. You understand? You can choose to listen to me, or you can refuse. All I know, no matter what, I'm here to spread the good news. It's up to you to listen. It's up to you. No matter who it's coming from. If you want healing, trust who God sent your way. If you want healing, believe in the Son of God. If you want healing, you want your house to be healed, you want your church to prosper, believe that God is sending certain people to your life, to your church. Don't doubt because of how they look or how they sound or if they're not the usual. Oh, that's unbelief. Let me tell you something, people. Church folk are the biggest unbelievers. Whether you believe it or not. Church folk are. I know people getting tired of me talking about church folk. Because church folk don't realize they are the church. They don't. They don't realize the power of prayer. They got a little unbelief in them. They feel like they got to wait for the preacher to come. They got to call for the preacher. The preacher has his missions. You have yours. If you want healing to come into your family, into your household, into your relatives, into your friends, you got to be willing to know that you have power bestowed upon you by God. You understand? You know, it's an old story. And my wife tells me this all the time. It was a man stuck on the, I might mess this up big time. But, but it's a story, a man was trapped at sea, and he was praying for Jesus to help him. And along come a boat, and he was like, hey man, you want some help? I'm waiting for Jesus. And along come another man on a raft. You want some help? No, I'm waiting for Jesus. Then along comes another man and a, something else. He wants to help. I'm waiting for Jesus. So this man drowns. He drowns out there in the water. And he reaches heaven. He was like, Jesus, I was waiting for you. Jesus was like, I came. I sent this man. I sent that man. 
and that man. You got to understand, people. Jesus works through people. God works through people. The Holy Spirit works through people. Sometimes not believing in the people that God sends your way can cause you to miss out on your healing. Miss out on your blessing. And church folks are the worst. They are. Lord Jesus, send growth to my church. Then, Lord, behold, somebody walked through the doors. That's not him. That's not who. That's, that's no way. You understand? He don't seem like somebody who's dedicated to the church. He don't seem like somebody who's dedicated to the word. Jesus' disciples face so much opposition in regards to people not believing in Jesus and not believing that they work for God. They faced many oppositions. Stephen was stoned spreading the word. A man of God stoned spreading the word. You see, you can try your best. And I, I'm, I'm glad that happened. You can try your best to reach certain people. They're still going to throw you underfoot. They're still going to trample you underfoot. And they're gonna, you're going to die. You understand? Trying to wait on certain people who are not really trying to hear you. Or hear the word of God. You understand? I had to learn some as a Christian. I can't beat the word into everyone. You know, if I can bring God up in any situation, I do. I do my best. I may not do all of what I should do, but I'm, I'm trying my best. But the thing is, just like Jesus sent those guys away, I'm like that sometimes. And every Christian is like that sometimes. Oh, they ain't finna hear this. Send them away. And we're going to focus on the mother, the father, Peter, and Simon. We're going to go in here. I need believers around me. In your life, you need believers around you. In order to achieve your dreams that God has set in your mind, you need believers around you. You need people who are going to help strengthen you through Christ. You understand? You got to understand something. Unbelief is one of the most deadly poisons in the world. Hypocrisy is a deadly poison. You know why a lot of churches are not being healed? It's not necessarily about unbelief. Wait, yes it is. You see, they believe a preacher can heal, but they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe that God can use them too. So that little doubt is stopping the healing. It's stopping the healing process. You can call on a preacher all day. Now you're believing in the preacher. You're not believing in Jesus. You understand? You're not believing in the truth. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. You got to understand. The power bestowed upon me is Jesus' power. The power bestowed upon you is Jesus' power. There's nothing I can do, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you have to believe in Christ. You have to believe that Christ died and rose. Do you really understand what that means? That means you have to believe in the resurrection of the dead. That means you have to believe in stopping of the flow of blood. That means you have to believe in a thousand legions of demons being cast out of one man. You understand? You have to believe that the blind can see. You have to believe these things. Unbelief is deadly. You know, like I said, Satan destroys many, many believers through unbelief. Destroys many. He pulls many away from Christ through unbelief. You go through a few trials that goes back to the sower and the seed. It goes back to the sower and the seed. Satan takes the word away from you instantly. Some hear it with gladness and joy, but when persecution arises, they stumble upon the word. Think about it. Persecution arises. They don't know the word. In the third stage, the deceitfulness of riches come on. Now you think your own hands have, you start worrying about riches and start worrying about the wrong thing. You're not worried about healing anybody no more. You're not worried about helping the poor. Just worry about yourself. Your God that became your better. Riches then came in, and now you forgot about God. But some, when they hear the word, they believe it. 
and come get, start bearing fruit, some 30, some 20, some 60 fold for the kingdom of God. But it's a two way street, but it's a one way street also. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's why I said you got to learn to let some people go. You got to learn to let people go out of your life. You understand? I'm saying if God compels you to go pray for somebody, you pray for them. But you got to understand, you know why you learn to let some people go? Because after a while, it's going to be like usury. They're going to think you're God. They're going to think you're God. You're the one that always coming through. You're the one that always coming through. You'll get to a point where you're praying and then God keeps sending you that way and you think you're the one. And then they start trusting in you. Not what Jesus can do. You understand? People, unbelief is dangerous. It is. I just want to stress that issue to everybody at the sound of my voice. Believe in Christ. Believe that you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Believe in the word of God. Believe everything that's written in there. Don't doubt. You understand? That's why people find all these different religions and these different things to worship. Because they don't believe that Christ can do anything. Witchcraft, voodoo. They put the power in their own hand. That's unbelief. Well, I believe in Jesus, but I got to do witchcraft too. I got to do sorcery. Well, you don't believe in Jesus. Have a blessed day.